Here's some other example from a long time ago. We have at the top a uh, little, uh, uh, we have a California, and we divide, we imagined that this California had four missile sites, and they, the missiles were launched from those sites, and you were in charge of tracking those missiles and shooting them down. Well, in your tracking algorithm, you to, to get good performance and track them uh, efficiently, you would use parallel computing. And you would probably, again, chop the problem up into parts, make certain one core was doing these four missiles here, another one, these four, and so on. So here we have a very different problem, missiles. And um, but we have still the same idea. We divide the problem up into parts and put each part in a single processor. Another example, which has uh, been implemented many times, especially a few years ago, when computer chess was very popular. It's now no longer so popular because computers are just simply too good. And they will beat any, any uh, human chess player easily. But we have, in the case of computer chess, the way computers um, calculate and uh, play chess is they do a very brute force method. They start at the at a particular position. They look at all possible moves in that position. Give them one move by, say, white, pawn to king four, so the so-called e4 move. Then they look at all possible moves of black, which is either in case it might be pawn to king four, pawn to king three, pawn to queen four, and so on. And they build. They just then they go back to white and they build trees. And what you have to do is build those trees. You look at the end of the bottom of the tree and you score it by adding up the number of pieces left on the board and produce a score for that position. And then you try to choose the move which gives you the best score. Uh, irrespect, assuming the opposition plays the best move at each stage. And this can be done in parallel. Um, and um, here is uh, an obvious way of doing it in parallel. We take these uh, these moves here. We assign each of these moves to a different processor. We calculate the best in each processor, then take the best of the best. And this is all done in a rather subtle fashion called alpha beta pruning. And you have to refer to the literature to know how to do it completely optimally. But it's still the same idea, you decompose the problem. And here we have moves is the thing we're decomposing. So here is another example, a little related to that cosmology example, where we have a bunch of particles. I've just drawn them in two dimensions. And we're trying to chop them up into processes. And here's an example of how to do it. And this is one way of doing it. You chop the, the world up and you put processor number one with those particles, processor number two with that, and so on. An alternative is the so-called scattered decomposition. You have still four processors, you keep you, do, you make a mesh. And so uh, where one appears many times, whenever there's a one, you store that particle in processor one. And this, um, this one here I did optimally, so everybody has 21 particles. Uh, for this case here, doesn't, it's not optimal. Um, and uh, we actually have part, uh, node one having more particles. So why would you ever use this? The advantage of this approach is when things move, because these particles will be moving around. And so it's um, not so obvious when you do this simple geometric decomposition that when they move, you'll keep the um, the load balance, and in fact, you won't. And the advantage of the scattered decomposition as things move around, it will always still be roughly right. It was never perfect at any one stage, but that's a method which is more stable than this is the optimal method at a particular time. This is a stable decomposition which can, which is probably better to use. So here we have a some summary of, of these ideas. Uh, we pointed out the clusters. When we're doing clustering, we put points in the, the multiple cores. But, and then a given cluster, we're gonna decompose the points. But then a cluster is gonna want to have some of its, will have several um, points. 
but that cluster will then probably spread over multiple cores. <coughs> so for that problem, the cores have to communicate with each other to make certain that we can actually calculate the parameters of each cluster problem. Um, we described how we would do web pages and divide those up for search algorithms. When we're doing recommender systems, we could divide up either items or users. I went through the chess case where alpha beta search <laughs> is implemented, and we decompose moves. And then we need an equal number of good moves on each core, which is pretty hard to do. In every case, we decompose these things in red points, web pages, items, moves. And we try to do it in a low balance fashion, and also a fashion that minimizes communication uh, between the different cores. This communication is always critical, because it's what makes certain everybody's working on the same problem. There are various architectures for parallel computing, so-called shared memory and distributed memory architecture. For things like computer chess, shared memory is particularly convenient, because you can more easily then synchronize the different um, cores. But uh, large-scale clouds are always so-called distributed memory. Every Apart from the cores on a given node, which are share the same memory, most of the cores have separate memories and need to communicate by sending messages. So here's this fundamental problem in parallel computing. Chop up the problem into parts, minimize the synchronization overhead and the communication overhead, and make the cores do roughly equal amounts of work. Then we have approaches for this, one called MapReduce, originally invented by Google which we have a little unit on. And that has some software called a dupe from Yahoo, which is open source in Apache. And then we have something called the message passing interface, which is, has some similarities to MapReduce, which is used in most scientific simulations. Here's another case illustrating the um, um, load imbalance. We have a um, we have a plate which is bending and it cracks just here. Then in order to simulate that crack, we need to put most of the mesh, which are here again elements, when we did these elements for that airfoil, near here. And if we did equal geom ge ge geometrical decomposition, the load and workload will be terrible. And with the minimum load, the minimum number of elements per processor will be six, and the maximum is 331. Complete catastrophe, because essentially this poor processor here does all the work. And therefore, if you ran it like that in parallel, you'll get terrible performance. And so you need to do it differently, and here's a way of doing it differently. You could decompose it, as I suggested, by putting an equal number of nodal points in each processor. It's not too easy to do that precisely. But it looks sort of like this. You can see most of the processes are stored here. I should say that we try to do this with these geometrically compact regions so that every processor has all the points in a well-defined geometrical region. That's because of the local structure of this problem, where the basic algorithm involves any given nodal element knowing about the neighboring nodal elements. So in these types of problems, we always try to keep the geometry um, obeyed. Uh, this in a computer science language, this load balancing pro problem is exponentially hard, so it would be complete. But there are many good practical methods. This one happened to use, I think, uh, so-called simulated annealing, which is a particular powerful, albeit sort of slow optimization problem. And uh, when we did this, we got uh, almost perfect workload, not exact. But once you get to um, this case here with 10% difference between minimum and maximum, that's that type of overhead of a few percent is not important compared to other overheads you have. So you don't, and that's all you really need. So you do not need exact answers here, you just need good answers. <laughs>